What is up, New Beginnings Church? Uh, welcome to our devotional series. We're in them red letter words, Matthew chapter 12. Um, let's get it. It's hump day, but I'm going to get you over it. Um, really, really some strange words. I don't even want to say strange words. Shocking words, unnerving words, scary words a little bit. I think as a Christian, you're like, whew, that sounds bad. Uh, let's read these words. It says in verse 31, Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man or Jesus, they'll be forgiven. But whoever speaks speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, when I grew up in Sunday school, they just said, hey, man, if you bring your sins, and that's kind of what 1 John 1 says, that if you confess your sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And so it's like, I thought God was in the sin-forgiving business, and he is. So there's some interesting things going on here. Um, I remember asking my buddy Shane, who's kind of a bit of a Hebrew scholar about this, and, and he kind of confirmed what, what, I, what I think was going on here. And that there, there is some play on words here. There's some, there's some idiom going on here where their usage of the term, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, um, to me was explained as it is the utter rejection of Christ, just the utter rejection of Christ. And the reason why it's connected to the Holy Spirit, because if you think about this, God is all, the God the Father is all about you. When you think about the parable of the prodigal son, that heavenly father is sitting there looking, anticipating, waiting for the son to repent and to come home, right? That's the image of the father. So he has set in plan this redemptive process. He sent Jesus into the earth. So Jesus is clearly all about your forgiveness and redemption and restoration. And so that's the plan of Jesus. And so they're like, look, you can kick against that. If you want to reject that, fine. But be careful about the blasphemy or the rejection of the Holy Spirit. The reason why I think the rejection of the Holy Spirit, they're like, you can't, you can't come back from that, is kind of what they're saying, is this. Is because if you are lost and in your sinfulness and just utterly rejecting God in your mind and in your heart, then it's only the Holy Spirit who can awaken you. It's only the Holy Spirit who can open your eyes. It's only the Holy Spirit who can soften your heart. I think life works this way if you look at it. I think I can notice this in people's lives. This is the observation, is that it'll be going along in life and they'll have a window where they're desperate and God leans in and they know they need to get right with God and they need to like lean into the moment and accept Christ but then they reject and push back. And then time goes by. And then something else comes up and God presents an opportunity or a window and the Holy Spirit's like tugging at their heart and doing a work. And they have these moments where their heart's really open and the Holy Spirit's speaking. And then they either can reject it or they can lean in and accept it. And I think what what there is something to say, hey, look, when you keep utterly rejecting God, And every time the Holy Spirit tries to speak to you, every time the Holy Spirit tries to draw you, every time the Holy Spirit tries to soften your heart, I think over time your heart can just get harder and harder and harder until you just don't ever respond to the drawing of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who awakens you to the idea that you even need God in your life. And so you can't keep rejecting the Holy Spirit because if you just keep continually rejecting the Holy Spirit, then you are cut off from the very thing you need that will soften your heart, open up your eyes, and awaken you to the realization that you need God. And so if you're a Christian out there, this is not a scripture that you should be afraid of. You should never be like, oh my God, did I do that? This would be something that you would be constantly and consciously and utterly doing. This is not something you can accidentally do or stumble into and be like, oh, remember that one time? That's not how this works. This is, again, the utter rejection of Christ and the utter rejection of the Holy Spirit's work in your life. And so maybe if nothing more, I just bring you a little bit of comfort, a little bit of clarity on some scripture. And so that's my take on it. And so I want us to to walk away and say, well, hey, as a Christian, I'm not utterly rejecting Christ, but I really want to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I really want to be open to the Spirit of God nudging me, urging me, calling me, pulling me, drawing me. The Holy Spirit works in such a unique way. And so I want to be very, very sensitive to that. I want to open up my heart to that and just be open to the leading of God's Spirit in my life. That's our walk away today. Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, I pray God, help us always to be a people sensitive to your Holy Spirit. May we always be led by your Spirit. May we surrender and not resist to the work that you want to do in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can I get an amen? Church, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.